Welcome to the final episode of the KV2 on air and ground in scale. In the next few minutes we're going to focus on the tracks, some more weathering, creating leaves and putting the mighty green monster on a little vignette using AK Interactive's diorama series, so watch the video until the end to see the final reveal. Let's work with the tracks using different acrylic rust tones. I have a rust set from Life Color, which has three nice shades I will use. The tracks have been primed in Mission Models Black Primer and now I diluted the lightest rust color to a wash and just brush it all over the tracks and let it dry. As a second color I mix a light rust tone and thin it with water to another wash and brush it again all over the tracks. Following Uncle Nightshift's workflow of getting nice tracks, I used the speckling method to add the medium rust color. The tracks were still very light, so I used the darkest color and thinned it to a wash and again applied it over all the tracks and let them dry. Now this step is in my opinion the most important one. With a dark grey color like this from Alejo, you dry brush all the tracks. While I'm dry brushing the tracks, you could click on the subscribe button if you like what you see and if you want to see more content like this on my YouTube channel. There is one more step to finish the tracks, but I'll do this when the model is attached to the vignette, so now I can glue the tracks to the tank. The tracks are link and length, so to get them a little bit sacked, I squeezed some q-tips between the fenders and the tracks, and I glued the tracks with CA glue to the wheels. Having the tracks in place, I wanted some more dirt and dust to the model. So again, I used the same enamel products like in the last episode and weathered some spot on the fenders a little bit more. First I brushed on odorless thinner over the surface and then applied the enamels which I then blurred over the surface. While blending I want to shout out a big thank you for every like on my Instagram profile where I try to add more relevant pictures in the progress making these episodes. Thanks for your support and motivation. As the model is almost complete I started with the autumn vignette for which I needed leaves. I took acrylic autumn leaf colors from different brands and some silk paper sheets as the material. I'll use this leaf puncher from Green Stuff World, which has four different shapes in a nice scale. It is very easy to do. First you paint the silk paper with autumn colors. First I did use a brush, but you are much faster with the airbrush. After the sheets dried, I cut some smaller sheets and folded them together so that with the puncher you can produce many leaves in a short amount of time. After you've finished, crunch them up a little bit between your fingers and you're ready for the next Indian summer. To create the base, I cut a rectangle from isolation material. The scratches on the side are from my cats and I tried to fill them with acrylic putty, which doesn't look good at all, but let's just continue. This dough is easy to apply and dries by air after a few hours. I just laid out a flat panel and glued it to the base. I cut the sides and made some marks from the tracks of the tank while it was still workable. As it dried it shrunk and created some tears. 
I don't know why, but as the ground gets covered, I didn't mind. I primed the whole base with a black spray can, easy and fast. To create the groundwork, I use AK Interactive's diorama paste, primarily dark earth and some wet ground. I simply applied them with a brush over the ground and blended them together with water. After letting it dry, I again covered the ground with thinned down diorama paste and then sprinkled some leaves over it. I pushed some leaves here and there into the paste. After continuing to sprinkle the leaves in several passes, I used Emomic sand and gravel glue. I poured it over the leaves with a dropper to glue the first layer to the base. While the gravel glue was still wet, I added more of the leaves over the base where I wanted. To weather the leaves, I used a dark grey wash from Malejo and added some drops here and there over the leaves. To create some puddles, I used a dedicated product from AK Interactive and just poured it onto the base. With a brush, I spread the acrylic paste until the sinkholes were filled with paste. Sometimes you have to repeat the process and add several layers until the holes are filled enough. Now it was time to attach the model to the base, which I did with acrylic paste. I spread it generously over the marks and pressed the model into them. Then adding some more of the two different pastes to the sides of the tracks and blending them with a brush and water and adding some leaves here and there. Where necessary, I brushed and speckled the acrylic puddle product to blend the model to the base. As a last step, I took a lead pencil and rubbed it over some paint chips and corners and most importantly over the tracks to really finish them. The KV2, the first tank on this channel, air and ground in scale, is now finished. And yes, I forgot the antenna and added it afterwards. I like the kit as a technique practicing subject because of the vast surfaces to weather. I learned a lot and there are several things which I would do differently on tanks of this size. And different materials I'll use for weathering on the tank itself. And I started to like enamel products for weathering, which I'll certainly use in the future. A big thank you to everyone who supported me in this series and gave me some valuable feedback in the process. It doesn't sound like much, but I really appreciate it. This said, I'm interested in feedback about the whole series, what you liked or disliked, and on what I could focus more or what was really boring. Subscribe if you haven't already, so you don't miss the start of the next series, and I wish you a great weekend at your workbench.